There we go. Good morning or good afternoon if you're looking at this later and welcome to today's family service and um, we're going to have an interesting morning for you as we normally do in some different ways and I hope you'll be able to stay with us for a while and enjoy some of the songs old and new as we said this is for the young in heart so as we say sometimes with the year two or 92 and uh, I hope again you can get something from this you know Jesus speaks about a housekeeper and uh, or a, a teacher he speaks about really and sometimes uh, when we go and listen we go to school go to job go to training university this week was uh, helping a friend take a, a friend here to university here in Edinburgh and of course when we go and we get taught sometimes it's very familiar oh i know that and then there's some things which are new oh i didn't know that but you know we can be as the bible talks about be ever learning ever learning and sometimes oh i don't want to learn anymore and uh, but it's so good but and there's two ways of learning there's the learning in the head where we just remember facts but then there's learning in our heart which is really the main thing especially when we're teaching about the Lord Jesus uh, because we get to know him yes we understand from our head but then there's that great journey and we're going to speak in today a bit about a journey that the Israelites did a great journey and we have a great journey that takes place within us and it's a great journey from our head to our heart now I don't know how was the measurement of that is how long how, how, how far is it how many meters is not uh, from the head to the heart? It's not a long distance, but you know, sometimes it can take a lifetime, yes, to get something from here into here. That's right. Some people, for instance, like each week when we come along, one of the things we always tell everybody, because this is so incredibly true, that Jesus loves you. And, and it's almost like, Jesus loves me, what does that mean? And we hear it and we hear it and we hear it. And one day, we have what we call our, our uh, we call it our eureka moment. What's a eureka? Nothing to do with smell. It's to do with, apparently, I think it's Archimedes. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not checked it out, but uh, I'm just trying from memory. It might be wrong, you can look it up. Look at Google and see if I'm right. I think it's like with um, Archimedes, I think it was what they call displacement of water. And suddenly he realized, oh, this incredible truth about displacement. And he, sh he shouted out, Eureka! <laughs> Meaning, I've understood, I've understood. And we can have, and I hope you have had a Eureka moment when you have discovered that you are loved yes you are loved well i think that must be a cue for a song but before we do that let's just pray lord jesus thank you that you're with us thank you you will never leave us lord we want that to be a eureka moment to understand that lord your love is constant will never change that your name and your nature is love oh holy spirit you are the great great teacher help us understand so that the journey from our head to our heart is not a long one but may be very brief and very short that yes we get excited about what you have done for us yes well i was actually i don't know if uh, any of you have been watching the news because sometimes maybe you can watch this months later but what happened last night and people were maybe staying up because I, I, i'll just show you this because i thought i was quite carried away with it as well what we're talking about well i'll just show you a picture yesterday there was a tennis match. There's lots of things going on yesterday. But yesterday there was a tennis match. And 
this tennis match was a young lady playing a British lady though she's from Chinese and Romanian parents and here she is there's this picture of her this uh, Emma Radunch Raducan I think that's it I'm not quite sure really how to pronounce the name yet and an 18 year old girl who suddenly had a eureka moment yesterday which was just quite incredible from literally as they say out of nowhere though obviously she trained and prepared out of nowhere she won this amazing us open title playing 10 games in a stretch in, in a stretch one after another because she had to qualify or she uh, to go right through the different rounds instead of the age of uh, the 10 i think and of course incredibly she won and of course here in the uk everyone is cheering her absolutely amazing and of course she won that last shot where she won the championship and she had as we say that eureka moment where she says yes i've done it i've done it and she certainly did and everyone is very very excited for her what they call an, an amazing phenomenon really and uh, so everybody is celebrating this lovely person who has just won this amazing tennis title so now apparently it seems as though everyone's interested in women's sports of tennis again and uh, this lady has suddenly become very famous it really was quite a, an exciting match yesterday so um i thought i'd just show you that because this lady faced up to a challenge this girl emma faced up to a challenge and she was able to succeed but of course that challenge as we said didn't just come as a flash in the pan as we sometimes say but it took for her a lot of work a lot of consistency not only physical training but training her mind to keep focused on the prize and as we say that's a, a, a great example for you and I to keep focused on what our goal and what our aim is uh, to keep fixed upon the Lord Jesus which is the main thing fix your eyes upon the prize don't get distracted remember Jesus calls us to be disciples right as we said let's have a cue for a song as we were singing that as we were talking about that and as I mentioned one of the actual key things to remember is that God is love and no, I'm not sure we've done this for a while, but that's this cue for the song, which is, oh, I'm on the wrong page. Sorry about that. And uh, there it is. It's. Uh, it's this one. And this morning. I've got my. Special song up again so let's do this i think we did this last week but it's it's this truth and there is another there is another important verse in the bible which is a great verse for training and education and it simply says uh, a continual dripping wears away a stone that's an unusual verse isn't it a continual dripping in other words uh where I used to go to a teacher at school, there was a stone staircase and this so solid stone, but yet with people running up and down to classes because in the school, that stone staircase had been worn away. If every time you looked at it, children and young people had gone up and down the stairs over many, many years, you would not notice it day by day, but after a time, that stone was worn away because of the constant up and down, up and down. They, they even say that mountains can be worn away with so many people climbing up it. And so it can lose its inches or its millimetres just because of the number of people who walk up it. So it can change its height. Isn't that amazing? Right, there we go. So this is what I mean about a repetition to understand 
you are loved to understand God's got a purpose for your life and to understand no matter whatever happens Jesus will as Mickey says he'll be up in a minute will never leave you okay here we go let's do this one are you ready here's my picture coming up God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be you should be happy and i can be happy and that's the way it should be you should be happy and i can be happy and that's the way it should be but you can be sad yeah and i can be very sad but that's not the way it should be you can be sad and i can be very sad but that's not the way you should what Mickey, what are you doing no i haven't forgot you i was just telling people about about god's love yes i know i always bring you in look there you are look, look say hello say hello hello everybody i'm sad now well no but you're not meant to be sad yes because i love you mickey yes and lots of these people are looking they love you yes i, I love you too okay so well, let's do that together and then you can get you can get rid of your sadness do you want to get rid of your sadness yes i don't want to be sad okay neither do i but we can say you can be sad you can be sad and i can be very sad yes i can be very sad but that's not the way it should be. You can be sad. Yes, I can be sad. <laughs> and I can be very sad too. But that's not the way it should be for. Let's go to my smiling face. Mickey, hang on a minute. Wait, can you put you down there? See if we can get that. Okay. For. God loves you and I love you. And that's the way it should be. God loves you and I love you and that's the way you should be. Leads my cat, come on here. Okay, now here's a good one. And I hope this is not going to happen to you, Mickey, because this isn't a good one as well. He says, uh, let's see. Uh, here we are. You. There it is. There's the picture. Oh, I don't like him. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, that's right. He's not. The Bible says, don't go near an angry man. But you can be angry. <sighs> and I can be very angry. <sighs> but that's not the way it should be. You can be angry. <sighs> and I can be very angry. <sighs> I'm angry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. But that's not the way it should be. For oh, God loves you and I love you. And that's the way it should be god loves you and i love you and that's the way it should be and we should love others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be we should love others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be for god loves you and i love you and that's the way it should be god loves you and i love you and that's the way it should be and that's the way it should be yeah. that's good we can enjoy that yeah it was a bit of fun wasn't it there we go we got to be our picture now yes hi again everybody I enjoy that. I'm not sad anymore. I hope you're not sad anymore. No, that's right. Because we've been on the journey and the journey has happened from the head to the heart. And we know and understand the love that God has got for us. And it's always constant. His love is always constant. Lots of things change in our world, but God's love never changes okay so we've got another song that's just part of my heart you see one of the things 
just looking at that amazing uh, uh, competition yesterday of the tennis and the amazing rise of this 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 girl Emma who did a wonderful thing is she was strong she didn't give up and she persisted and that's how anybody who does anything has to do and it's the same in our Christian life but God wants us to uh, be bold and be strong but that's not the song we're going to do we're going to do this one and what I'm going to do is just so you can see it I'm going to come out of this lovely background I've got here which is a picture of Lockinch here in Scotland and I'm just going to come out of that just now and so there we go you can see me so we can see the words and as Christians today I was talking to a young lady who'd gone to a secondary school and she's a Christian and this girl she was telling to me she says you know that people are always getting at me because I'm a Christian they start asking me all kinds of questions and in school here in Scotland lots of places they're asking people about sexuality and I, I do you believe this do you believe that and she says I just stand up for Jesus and the people have a go at her because of it and that's often will the case when we stand up for Jesus or stand up for the truth because Jesus is the truth it can be tough and it can be hard so thinking about that I was thinking about this song which is a golden oldie song sometimes we don't sing it but it's a wonderful truth so I've got it here uh, with these pictures and it simply goes like this it goes stand up stand up for Jesus you soldiers of the cross Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory on to victory, his army he shall lead, till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, you dare not trust your own put on the gospel armor each piece put on with prayer where courage calls or danger be never wanting there stand up stand up for jesus the strife will not be long it's day the noise of battle the next the victor's song to him that overcometh a crown of life shall be he with the king of glory shall reign eternally stand up stand up for jesus ye soldiers of the cross lift high his royal banner it must not suffer loss from victory on to victory his army he shall lead till every foe is vanquished and christ is lord in thee stand up for jesus you soldiers of the cross so mickey who have you got here today who's with you what Yes, you didn't expect him, did you? No, I don't like it when he's around. No, this is the serpent or the snake. We're going to hear about him today. Give him away. Yes, well, we know the serpent's not a nasty, uh, not a very nice creature. And of course, with his sting, yes. I have a sting. Ah oh, yeah, sorry about that. I didn't want to, hope didn't scare anybody. Um, Yes, uh, the serpent has a nasty sting, and we're going to hear about that in our story today. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, okay. Well, we'll do that later. So he's going to be around. Who else have we got? Oh, off you go, Mickey, because I just want to speak to the professor. Oh, the professor. Oh, yes, I like the professor. Yes, let's speak to the professor. Well, I, I call him the professor. It's, um, here he is. It's uh, Dr. Moody, actually. I don't know if any of you remember Dr. Moody. 
Come on, Mr. Moody, Doctor, how are you doing? Oh, hi, everybody. Welcome. Nice. Oh, hi. Well, it's all good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're uh, singing and enjoying yourself. Yes, yes, very good. That's it. This time in the morning because it's early here. Yes, it is early here. But, Professor, how are you doing? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tell me, Professor, because I know you every day, even though you're getting on a bit, I know that every day you read God's word, do you? Oh, yes, every day. You know, maybe you remember that song, and it's so true. Very important. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you grow, grow, grow. Yes, that's right. Okay, Professor, thank you very much. Uh, yes. So, oh, yes. Okay, so what are, you, what are you just reading? Well, I know you're going to tell this a bit later, but it is a very, very important story. It's about a man called Nicodemus. Nicodemus, yes, we are, Professor. Yes, uh, it's very interesting looking at Nicodemus because he was a man who, um, well, maybe is as old as me, <laughs> maybe, uh, and and you were talking about the journey from the head to the heart. Well, he had learned and learned and learned, but he didn't understand something very, very important. You're very right. I mean, Jesus actually pulled him off, didn't he? Because he had learned, but he never understood. That's absolutely right. So, it's very important that we understand what we're learning about. That really is, Professor. Okay, well, that, that's, a good, that's a good little truth. Yes, I, I, I've got a song there for you. I want you to sing to everybody. You have? What's that? Well, because I know it's about being born again. Born again, yes. What does it mean to be born again? Because we often hear about that. Yes, we do. But so many people don't understand what being born again means. Nicodemus didn't understand. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, hopefully, we will find out about that a little bit later. So, Professor, thank you for coming along. It's always good to see you. Yeah, hi, everybody. Good to see you, too. Take care. God bless you. Okay, off you go. Yes, I like the Professor. He's really good. And he said about being being born again. Now I've got a song here about that very thing. Here we have it. It's an old song, but yes, it's very good and it helps us understand. Here we have it here. It goes like this. There it is, the words. It goes, Do you know that you've been born again? Do you know that you've been born again? Does the spirit dwell within? Bearing witness that you've been cleansed from every sin and stain. Are you ready if the Lord should come? Or today your soul should claim? Can you face eternal years free from doubt and dread and fears? Do you know, know, know that you've been born again? Do you know you've been born? You can know. You can really know. Are you born again? And hopefully, maybe we'll finish with this today, if we get the time. Here's the answer. Yes, because if you're a Christian, then a true Christian, that is, then you could say this. Yes, I know that I've been born again. Yes, I know that I've been born again. For the spirit dwells within, bearing witness that I've been cleansed from every sin and stain. I am ready if the Lord should come, or today my soul should claim. I can face eternal years free from doubt and dread and fears. Yes, I know, know, know that I've been born again. And just to mention this because this was fairly sad for us this week well not only sad for me but sad for many people who love this young man when i went to africa and um which i like to do of course to go up there and join with the children and, and sing and, and tell them about jesus 
there was a, a friend of mine, only a younger man, maybe late 30s, 40s, I'm not sure of his age, but he was so enthusiastic. He would, uh, I would meet him, he would arrange meetings for us with the children, would go out on the streets. He was like what we would call a Pied Piper. When he went along, he would have a wee megaphone, call all the children, get them singing, then we'd tell them about Jesus. And my friend James, oh, it was tremendous. And when he drove through the African traffic, it was like, sometimes we say like Jehu on these chariots, uh, he says, drove furiously. And it was, it was just such a great guy. And then this week, I heard that he'd gone to heaven. Yes, I am ready if the Lord should come. He went to heaven, basically, and... I was asking my friends in Africa about what had happened and apparently he'd had a heart attack and he's now gone to be in the presence of the Lord, even though he was quite young, but he was ready. He was ready for Jesus to come and now he is rejoicing with, with, with the Lord Jesus in heaven. But my, I'm going to miss him, but I know lots and lots of people in Africa who he helped. He helped to teach about Jesus. He helped them come to know him. They are very sad at this time because James has left them for this, for the greater life, the wonderful place in heaven, which Jesus has for all those who love him. And James was born again and he knew it. And he told other people about that too. Well, today we're going to start uh, a serial story. I think, I'm not sure, but maybe years ago or whatever, I have this, uh, mentioned about this story about a missionary. And God has called us to be missionaries. Missionaries are really sent ones, ones who goes to other countries. And this is a missionary about a man called John Payton. John Payton I was a Scottish missionary. And what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to give you a summary and then we'll look at it in a little bit more detail. Um, I've got some pictures here, which is just a summary of John Payton, who he was and his life. And then we're going to have a little bit more closer look at his story. I, now, where is it? There it is. Okay, aha, you can't see it. Sometimes I forget to share the screen. Okay. And now, this is the picture of John Payton. This is an actual picture of John himself when he was older. And what John did, he, was, he went out to be a missionary amongst cannibals here at this island here. This is Australia there. And you can see this was one of the islands where he went and told people about Jesus. And in those days, the people ate people. Yes, they did. They were what they call cannibals. Right, okay. So, uh, oops, I'm going the wrong way. There you go. So that was a picture of John. Now he was born in Scotland and um, <laughs> when he had a call from God to go to these islands, he was told he could be eaten by cannibals which uh, uh, is, is a bit scary and the people tried to put him off from going but he didn't let it put him off and uh, as I said I'm going to show you in a moment some more of the story this is some of the pictures uh, that we'll see as we go through this story the next two or three weeks exciting absolutely incredibly exciting now just uh, as you can see those pictures are sometimes how we worked with what we call the native people in the island of Tana and uh, those others. And we're going to find out some of the things that happened. Now, when the person says to him, and this is what I wanted to show you, you'll be eaten by cannibals if you go out there to those islands. And sometimes people do try and put us off from following Jesus. So John Gibson Payton, that was his full name, said, If I die here in Glasgow, I shall be eaten by worms. 
That's obviously sometimes what happens when we are buried. If I can but live and die serving the Lord Jesus, it will make no difference to me whether I am eaten by cannibals, oh dear, or by worms, oh dear. For in the great day, my resurrection body will arise as fair as yours in the likeness of our risen Redeemer. Yes, because the Bible explains we are going to have a new body, a resurrection body. It is going to be absolutely incredible. We think this body is amazing. It is. In what we can do, the Bible explains that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, if you want to read that, it tells us right from the time we were in our mother's womb or in our mother's stomach, God was watching over us. Yes, he was, as it says, as we were made, as God formed us in the, our tummy, uh, uh, the tummy of our mums. Yes, all of us were the same. And this is why it's so important to protect the life of a child in the womb. So, uh, yes, hang on. So let me just come out of this because I want to come back because uh, here we go. Because I want to start the, the, the story of John Payton this morning. And I have here. OK, as we said, John was born near a... Uh, a town in Scotland here called Dumfries. It was a place called Kirk, Kirk Mashu and uh, Brayhead, Kirk Mashu, where he was. And it's a hard name to say as well, where he lived. Torthorwald was the place where he was born. And John, here he is. Well, he's one of them. That was his dad. There was one of 11 children. 11 children, can you imagine? Well, some people have lots of children. When I go to America, I have friends there, and they had 11, 12 children. Wonderful. But John was the eldest. And one of the most important things he loved in the day was when his dad got them all together and he used to pray. And what he loved more than anything else, when as his father went through all the names of the children, and when he came and he says, and Lord, bless, bless John, help him, help his brothers and sisters, help them to know you, Lord Jesus. No, oh, may you use them for your glory, because you have a special purpose for all of their lives. Well, John just loved to hear his father pray. And he watched him because his father, three times a day, his father would go and he could hear him praying in the little room that he had, praying for his children, praying for the, the world, praying for Scotland, praying that God would help people come to know and to love him. And he used to pray that God would use some of his children to go into all the world and tell others about him. Well, those are the prayers that God heard. Now, as you can imagine, in those days, things, especially with 11 children, he lived just in a small place and he was, it was, it, they were very poor. And often the mom used to have to stitch all the clothes and, and it was hard work, of course, keeping them all fed and to make things for them and keep them decent and tidy, which of course they did. But John's clothes were starting to get him very, very worn because they had been uh, sewn up so many times. And so the father began to pray. And John tried to pray, you know, for some new clothes. Well, one day as they were praying, there was a kind of, they heard the latch of the door go. And so when they had finished praying, they looked and there was a parcel. Yes, there was a parcel. And in that parcel, when they opened it, there was a new suit of clothes, which were for John. And John began to realise that God answers prayer and God will look after us. That's what the Lord Jesus says. Look at the birds of the air, Jesus says. Look how they grow. Look how the birds, how they are fed. 
and your Heavenly Father looks after them. But he says, you are much more important. How much more will the Lord look after you? So John worked hard. He used to study. And he got a job. And uh, he went to the village and uh, he got a job there. And then as, as he got a job, um, one day a man, seeing that John was working very hard, and as he, he worked very hard at his job, which he had got, he was working as a map maker, actually, that's what he was doing. And John used to study. In fact, one of the things that happened to John was when he was at school, there was a, a teacher who was very severe. And in those days, of course, it doesn't happen now. In those days, if you misbehaved, you used to get the cane. Or when I was at school, they used to call it the stick. Here in Scotland, they call it the toss. And of course, if you were doing anything wrong, they would immediately smack you or hit you with a stick or a cane. And it was very, very sore. But it often worked when there was lots of problems in the school. And at one point, John wasn't doing anything wrong. But the headmaster suddenly blamed him for doing something which he hadn't done. And he got the cane and he was beaten. And John was so upset about that, he actually left the school. Because he was so upset that he had been unfairly treated. Now, it's always very sad when we get unfairly treated, but not to put, don't let us put us off. These things happen. But John, because it was so difficult for him at the school, he began to study by himself. And then one day, um, after he'd studied and grown up and he was doing this job, the boss called him into his office and he says, John, I have been watching you. Oh, yes. And I see that you're a hard worker. You work very, very hard. And I want to offer you a job. Oh, yeah. well, he had a job, but yes. But John, what I want you to do, and I will give you a pay increase and you'll become a very valid member of the work here. But uh, there's something I want from you. Oh, yes, said John, what's that? Well, I want you to sign a contract, a paper that you'll stay with us for seven years. And John says, um, that's very kind of you, but I'm afraid I can't do that. Why not? Well, there's someone else I have promised to work for. And I don't think he wants me to work here for seven years. How do you mean? Well, he says, I'm a Christian. And I know that God is going to be guiding me and I'm going to be serving him. In ministry so I cannot commit myself here seven years to you. Oh the man was so angry that John lost his job. He fired him and so then John he had to go to help his dad in the fields we didn't mind but of course it wasn't much money for that until the time came when his word came. That's right John was waiting, waiting patiently but when what God had put in his heart to serve him was going to come. And then a few years later, the Lord says, John's now the time. And so John, he had to go to Glasgow. And this is very important in John's life because there was what there was to be dad who he loved very, very much. And he was going to Glasgow, it's 40 miles. And of course, in those days, you went by stagecoach and uh, sometimes quite expensive to travel. So John was going that 40 mile walk to Glasgow. And his dad went along with him for six miles. And then his dad says, look, John, I'm going to have to go now. And, and, his, and John says, yes, dad. And he remembered his dad's prayers and how his dad prayed for him. And his dad loved him and it broke. It was really, really hard for him to leave his dad. but. He knew that this is what God wanted. And so he said goodbye to his father. And he always remembered the prayers of his dad. 
And of course, his dad was constantly praying for him. And I hope people are praying for you. So good, the Bible talks about praying for each other. It's very important that we do that. Okay, we'll just have one more song and then we'll go into our teaching from the Word of God this morning. So let's go into, let's see, what shall we have? Okay, let's do this one. Because it's so important to have faith, to trust what God says. Okay, and here it is. It goes, faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will never fail us. Excuse me, I'm not quite sure if you can see it. I keep forgetting, sorry. Here we go. Uh-huh. Right. That's better. Now you can see it. Right. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will never fail us. His promises are true. If we will receive him, his children we become. Faith is just believing. This wondrous thing is done. Prayer is just talking to God through Jesus Christ. He will always listen and give us good advice. If we will but speak, he will hear our voice. Prayer is just talking to God through Jesus Christ. Last time. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will never fail us, his promises are true. If we will receive him, his children we become. Faith is just believing, this wondrous thing is done. Right, here we go. And we're coming now to our special story about Nicodemus. Okay. And Start here from the beginning, and Mickey asked me to put this picture up for you this morning. Um, Jesus says this is one of the promises that we learn constantly. Remember, getting in our head, so it travels down into our heart. <laughs> and I will never leave you nor forsake you. So here we go. And this is a picture of Jesus. Now we read this story. In the Gospel of John chapter 3 and the Lord Jesus he has a visitor and this visitor comes to Jesus by night because he did not want his so-called friends to see him talking to Jesus because this man was what we call a Pharisee. He was a religious person. He was a person who taught others about God. And he understood that Jesus was a man sent from God. He would watch him what Jesus was doing. He would see the miracles. He would listen to Jesus speaking. And he realized that the Lord Jesus is somebody who is so incredibly special and amazing and yet his friends would be mocking and scorning and saying this man is not from God how can he say he is there's nothing in the Bible about him and yet we know because the Bible they were talking about was the Old Testament and we know in the Old Testament there were lots about Jesus lots and lots how the Old Testament speaks about the Messiah who was to come and how he would come, and uh, what he would do, how he would heal, how he would save, how he would come meek and lowly. Well, Nicodemus, even though he's with his friends, he understood Jesus is special, so he wanted to come and to see him. And one of the things he wanted to know, Nicodemus, he wanted to know a very important question. He wanted to know how to get to heaven. Now, this is very important. How do we get to heaven? If somebody comes to you and says, do you know, I'd like to get to know God and I'm a bit scared of dying. What's going to happen when I die? Uh, will I go to heaven? 
Is there a place called hell? What will happen? Many people, even though they may not ask that question, sometimes secretly, they want to know. Well, it's very important. What will happen to us when we die? As I said earlier, I know my friend James, he's gone to heaven. I know that. Why? Because he could answer the question that Nicodemus was asking. Nicodemus wanted to know how to get to heaven. So Jesus came and says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, to get to heaven or to see God's kingdom, you must be born again. Oh, oh, and Nicodemus, what, what? What are you talking about? You know, when, when, really, when this is really what Jesus was saying. And, and it'll show, let me show you, for instance, let me show you. Here's the words. These are the words from the Bible. I'll just lift them up before you here. I hope you can see that. You see, this is a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, we know you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs or these miracles that you do unless God is with him. So Jesus, knowing what he wanted to know, said, Most assuredly, I tell you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? And this is quite amusing, really. This, you know, because Nicodemus says, can I enter the second time into my mother's womb or my mother's stomach and be born? And so Jesus, he said, most assuredly or truly, he says, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel or do not be surprised, Jesus is saying, you must be born again. So, you must be born again. And he thought that he would go and see uh, his mother's stomach. I mean, he did not understand. And Jesus look, was explaining these things about being born of water. And of course, what was happening, John the Baptist was baptizing people for repentance in the water. So in other words, the water was a symbol of repentance, of um, giving our lives to God. So that's a symbol, but then he speaks, and this is the most important part, about of the spirit. You see, God, sends his holy spirit remember when jesus rose again he breathed into the disciples the holy spirit and the holy spirit he is the one who enters into our life and he changes us from within that's why we have power to do what god wants us to do because just like we're born a first time now when we become a christian or when we yield our lives to jesus and to god and say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. He breathes into us, the Holy Spirit comes. That's right. The very life of God, the Holy Spirit comes and he indwells us. You see, we are we are what we call, and for the older ones just to understand, we are called what we call tripartite. We are body, we live in a body. The body, this is what goes into the grave and dies or whatever. The body we put off and a body with the spirit or the the normal the human spirit that forms our soul and we are people persons now when we die our body goes and our soul and our spirit goes to god now god's spirit the holy spirit he comes when we receive jesus and he enters in and to our spirit now, Nicodemus was having a struggle, a, a problem understanding, like many people today have a problem understanding. So Jesus told him a story. And this is what we're just going to look at very quickly now, because uh, let's go back. OK, into that story, into our pictures. And uh, so Jesus told him a story about Moses. And he told the story of Moses. And some of you will know the story how Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt. 
They were heading to the promised land. Now the journey to the promised land, you know, God did wonderful miracles through the Red Sea and parted it and did marvelous things. Well, and God sent them food from heaven every day. Well, on the journey, which could have taken four or five weeks, do you know how long the journey took? Yes, it took 40 years. That which should have been quite a short journey became a very long journey. And why was that? Well, because the problem was that people were murmuring and complaining. They were murmuring about Moses. Who told Moses to tell us this prayer? I don't like it. And what about this food we're having? I'm fed up of eating this manna every day, you see? And often they would complain and argue and a big word called rebel against Moses. And sometimes it got very, very difficult so that God had to intervene. And on this occasion, this is what happened. The people were complaining and arguing and turning against Moses. And then the Bible says, this is what happened. Serpents came into the camp like this. This is where a serpent comes in the snake. <laughs> and as the serpent came, it began to bite the people, as you can see. Not long after, because of the serpent's poison, the people died. And try, and as you can see here, get the, the sticks and the clubs to try to kill them. But there were so many of them, they couldn't get rid of them. They were everywhere. And everyone was affected. There was a boy, there was a girl crying because they'd been bitten by the serpents. They know they're going to die. Yeah. And the serpents were doing terrible things. Well, this happened for quite a while. But then when the people realized they couldn't solve the problem on their own, and then they recognized that they had sinned. That's right. And they recognized it was because of their rebellion, their turning against God, that this plague was upon them. So they came to Moses and they said, Moses, look, we're sorry. Will you please, please take, ask God to take away these serpents? Please. And so when Moses came to God, God told him, yes, the people have sinned. I'm going to go with them a remedy to get rid of these serpents or to be able to overcome the poison, the plague that's in them. This is what I want you to do. So God told Moses to make a serpent out of bronze, out of brass, and put it on a pole. So Moses, he took one of the serpents and he made an image of it like a bronze. And he put it on a pole like that. And he says to them, whoever's been bitten by the serpents, if you look on the serpents of bronze I've put on a pole, then God will heal you. Well, this must have seen a very strange thing. How can looking upon a snake or a serpent on a pole, how can that heal? Well, when God says, it happens. And that's the whole thing. If you do what God says, then things happen. And so the people who were desperate, who were dying, they would come along, they would look upon the serpent of bronze that was on the pole, and immediately they did so and they believed they were healed. It was wonderful, wonderful. Well, this news went around the camp. But unfortunately, I'm sure that this story I'm going to tell you now maybe happened because people are the same today as they were then. You see, we tell about Jesus. And people will mock, not believe, even though they have desperate needs. And sometimes it's so very, very sad. So, here I like to call this, uh, let's call this man, uh, sorry if you're a George and you're looking in, is let's call this man George. George's wife, uh, Emma, comes along and says, George, George, Moses has put a serpent to bronze on a pole. And he says, if you look at it, God will heal you. Oh, I don't believe what Moses says. That's just ridiculous. No, no, no. Look, Reuben's been healed. And, 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 and there's Issachar. He's been healed too. Please, please come along and God will heal you. I don't believe all this nonsense. I'll get better by myself very much. I'm fed up by Moses telling us what to do. No, please do that, George. Please, we don't want to see you die. Oh, go away, woman. Go away. And George dismissed his wife. And it was very sad because... George refused to believe. He didn't even was willing to give it a try. Even though he was so ill, George believed. Many people are like that today when we speak about Jesus. They 
simply dismiss the claims of Jesus, who he is, the son of God, how he can forgive our sin. And they just say, that's ridiculous. And sadly, people who are like that refuse the truth. Then, as Jesus says in that verse in a moment, I'll show you, then whoever believes not will perish. Here's another person. Let's call him Andrew. Here's Andrew. And Moses comes to Andrew, just a young boy. And he says, Andrew, you've been bitten by the serpents. Why haven't you going to see the serpent of bronze I put on a pole? Maybe Andrew said this, well, sir, I would like to, but my friends, they laugh at me and they say, there's no need to do that. You're just young, you'll be okay, you'll get better. Look, God has said to be healed, you're to look on the serpent of bronze. Would you like me to help you? Yes, sir, I really would. Please, I do want to, and I do want to believe. Okay. So Moses took hold of Andrew. They went to see the serpent of bronze, and immediately Andrew was healed as he believed in his heart what Moses had said. Then finally, this is, of course, I'm just making these stories up, but this is really what people are like. This is last person, and here's a person I like to call her Matilda. There we go, Matilda. I don't know if any Bible names in Matilda, but anyway, Moses comes along maybe very early in the morning and says, Matilda, you've been bitten by the serpents. Um, can I help you to take you to see the serpent of bronze and God will heal you? Oh, no, Moses. Oh, I couldn't go out there just now. I'm freezing. I'm on back. Oh, my bag is playing up. I couldn't walk at the moment. No, 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 no. Please, no, no, no. Come back later. Well, I really think you should come out, but I'll help you. Oh, no, no, Moses, come about lunchtime. Making excuses. So then Moses comes along about lunchtime and he says, there you are, Matilda. Are you ready now? I'll take you and see the serpent of bronze and God will heal you. Oh, Moses, I've got to go out there just now. I'm in all the heat of the sun. I can feel it through the tent. Oh, I shrivel up with the heat. Oh, Moses, I couldn't do that. You know, I don't like the sun. Oh, no, it's, it's hot to my eyes. I can't go out there. You're just making excuses. Come on, I'll help you. Oh, no, Moses, I'll tell you what. Come back about tea time. Look, I think you should come now. Your God loves you. He wants to heal you. Oh, Moses, go away, go away. Come back at me. You can help me. I think you should come now. No, 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 Moses. I'm not. It's too hot. It's too hot. Maybe she was right then. Making lots and lots of excuses. Well, Moses comes back about tea time. Guess what's happened? Yes, that's right. She had died. Because she put off doing what God told her to do when she was to do it. I hope none of you will do that. It's very important to do what God says when he asks you to. Is he asking you today to be born again? So, remember, Jesus was telling this story to Nicodemus. And he says to Nicodemus, just like that serpent of bronze was lifted up in the wilderness, so am I going to be lifted up? And here's the fact. The Israelites were bitten or infected with a serpent's poison. Their remedy was to look at the serpent of brass or bronze. When they looked, they lived and were healed. It's about you and I. This is the truth. We've all been infected with sin. The Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of God's glory. The remedy is to look to the Lord Jesus who died for us on the cross. When we look to him, Believe that he died for us. Believe he took our punishment on the cross. Believe that he is the son of God who came into this world to save us and bring us back to God. When we do that, we look to him and we're saved and God heals us. And finally, this is what this very famous promise of Jesus, because this is what Jesus says to Nicodemus. He says, Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is what Jesus told Nicodemus. And sometimes I use this expression, instead of putting the world there, you can put you. You can say, for God so loved you that he gave his one and only son, the Lord Jesus, that if you will believe in him, then you will not perish, but have eternal life. And finally, just to this, 
to show you this. Jesus says, he says, here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. If you, anyone, hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. So you heard the voice of Jesus today in these stories. That Jesus has a special purpose for you. That he wants to use your life for his glory. Are you willing to surrender your life to him? And to say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I want to be born again. Please, Lord, come into my life. Are you willing and can you say that today? And if you are a Christian, because Jesus is speaking this verse to Christians, just to, to give your life afresh to him and say, yes, Lord. I open the door of my life afresh to you. So if you'd like to do that, and you just pray with me as we say this verse together. Do you want to pray? And really mean it in your heart. Jesus is with you. And simply say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I open the door of my life to you. I know you died for me on that cross. I ask you to cleanse me from all my sin and come and live in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your promise, which I believe. Thank you. So give me more of your Holy Spirit and help me follow you. Amen. 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 Well, I trust that you know that you are born again, because that's what happens. A born again Christian is a person, really, it's really what a true Christian really is. You can't really be a Christian unless you're born again. And if you're born again, that means you receive God's Holy Spirit. You are willing to follow him, to dedicate yourself. Yes, just like we heard in the beginning of that story. Anyone who does something in the world, or even for a Christian, has to commit themselves to dedicate themselves. And I trust you've done that today. Anyway, it's great. Thanks for looking in. If you've enjoyed this, please share it with somebody else. And that's good, because we want everybody to hear about the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks again. See you through the week, midnight hour or different things that we'll do. Bye.